Hello and welcome to the field installation instructional video for the Metric Halo Mark IV analog upgrade for ULN 8 3D and Leo 8 3D units. In this video, we're going to take you through all the steps needed to physically install the upgrade in your box. There is no soldering involved in this upgrade and no special tools are required other than a number two Phillips head screwdriver and a small pair of pliers or preferably a nut driver tool size 3 16 of an inch. And of course some trays for organizing all of our various screws we'll be removing. I'll be using a power screwdriver to make things go a bit faster. This is optional, but if you choose to use one, just be sure that when putting screws back in, you have it set to the lowest drive setting possible. Let's take a look at what comes with the Mark IV Analog Upgrade Kit and make sure that we have everything we need ready to go. We have the Mark IV Analog Board, the Muterang, foam cap for the Muterang, new front panel metric halo dome tag. It is important to note that the Mark IV analog board upgrade requires that the 3D card be installed in order to function. Mark IV is not compatible with older Firewire units. The 3D upgrade can be installed at the same time as the Mark IV upgrade. Refer to our 3D install video as well if installing 3D. We want our unit to be fully powered down and to have no power or any other connections hooked up. The first step is to remove any rack ears you have connected to the box and set them aside together with their screws. Now let's remove the screws for the top panel case metal. There are up to three screws on each side of the case and six screws on top that we'll remove. Remove the top cover and before you set it aside, note that the underside might have at least one strip of masking. I have two on this one, but if you have only one strip on yours, just make sure that you line that up on the front of the unit when you put it back on. Next, we're going to remove the back panel. If you have an edge card installed, it will need to be removed first. Unscrew the screws around the edge card and pull the card out. Then we can remove the three screws underneath the back panel. We have two more Phillips head screws, one on either side of the 4-pin XLR power connector to remove here. With your fingers, twist off the four ring nuts and set them aside. Using pliers or a nut driver tool, loosen and remove the 10 DB25 side screws and set them aside. Slide the back panel off and set it aside. Sitting rather loosely now will be this AES MIDI and gasket board cluster that we can pull right up and set to the side. We'll be leaving the 3D card in place and changing out the large analog board, this large board on the bottom. If you have mic preamps installed, we need to remove them first along with the mic input connector board. If you have a Leo 8 with no mic preamps installed, you can skip ahead to the next section. Start by removing all of the screws holding down the mic input connector board and mic preamp boards. There may be some silicon in the way. You should be able to screw right through this, or if there is a larger glob of it, you can pick some of it off. Detach the cable that connects to the mic input connector board by squeezing the tab to release it. Leave the other side attached and set the end of this cable out of the way. The mic input connector board is connected to the mic preamp boards with these two ribbon connectors. We're going to pull these off on the side of the mic pre boards so that they stay connected to the mic input connector board. Then we can set this board aside. Next, we'll remove each of the mic preamp boards carefully. They are attached to the analog board below with pins that are found underneath. We'll just put a bit of pressure on the underside in one corner, then another corner, and they can be slowly wiggled off. Do this for each board and notice all of the pins underneath the board. 
These are going to go back in after we install the Mark IV board in the same fashion. It's going to be critically important that all of these pins line up into each of the holes present on the Mark IV board. By hand, we can now unscrew the standoffs that support the mic preboards. There are seven altogether. Next, we are going to remove the bridge board. The easiest way is to rock the bridge board back and forth laterally using two hands. Take your time with it, don't be afraid to apply a firm grip, and with that back and forth motion, it should eventually come off. Toward the front of the unit, we have this beige colored connector with 10 black wires connecting the internal power supply board to the analog board. We just need to pull this out on the one side that connects to the analog board. The headphone board connects to the front right corner. There's a tab that we can squeeze to release that. Remove the ribbon cable coming from the DI board from the side of the board and set the cable out of the way. Now in back of the unit, we have ribbon cables attaching three DB25 connectors on this separate board to the analog board. Starting in the corner, we just need to pull off the side that attaches to the analog board. We can do the same for the next one. Then for the last one here that connects to the line out, we're actually going to take this entire connector off because the muterang is going to attach here later. To finish removing the old analog board, unscrew all the Phillips screws around the perimeter. Now we just need to take out the old board and place the new one down. The holes in the board are the exact same, and they will line up with the posts on the bottom metal. We can then screw the new board back down with the same screws we just took out, Make sure to get a screw into all four corners first. Then a few more can go around the perimeter. Okay, with the Mark IV board screwed in, we can start reconnecting the cables we had detached. The beige connector from the power supply board should be lined right up and guide itself into the connection on the Mark IV board. Now, the next several steps all require that we be extra careful as they involve pin alignment that is absolutely critical. If there's any misalignment here, it can potentially lead to damage. So pay very close attention to make sure pins are lining up the way they should be. The DI board ribbon cable reconnects to the pins on the side here. Look very closely and make sure that these pins are lined up fully with the holes in the ribbon connector. The same goes for the ribbon cables coming from the DB25 board. There are two rows of pins for each connector. Make sure that they are fully aligned as well. The seven standoffs for the mic preamps will go back into the same holes as before. Now we'll reattach the mic preamp boards one at a time. Take note of all the pins on the bottom of the mic pre board and all of the receiving holes on the Mark IV analog board. If the unit has only four channels of mic pre's, the mic pre board goes into the slot toward the side of the unit, so we'll start with this one. Get them lined up loosely at first with a larger set of pins, then look very closely underneath to see that the smaller pins are lining up loosely as well. If there is a major offset with the smaller set of pins, you can gently bend the receptacle to straighten it. Now with the pins looking and feeling like they are lined up loosely, you can push down and they should go in fairly smoothly. Push the board so that the pins are no longer visible and the board is seated all the way down. Let's do the same for the next mic pre-board with the same level of attention to the pin alignment. Now we'll take our mic input connector board with the ribbon connectors and line these pins up with the pins on each mic preboard and kind of squeeze them on so they are fully seated. Reattach the cable that connects to the mic input connector board. The 45 degree angle on the receiving end is normal and allows the cable end to stay clear of the top of the cover, so do not straighten it out. We can then screw the remaining silver screws into the mic input connector board and mic prees. 
If the screw holes on the mic preboards are not centered over the standoffs, the screw may either drop right into the hole with no resistance, or it will hit resistance on the standoff because of an offset. In that case, it means that the pins did not line up correctly and the boards should be removed and checked again for proper alignment. The headphone board can now connect right back to the front corner with the tab facing the front of the unit. Next we will install the muterang, which also requires very careful pin alignment. The white relay section goes over the pins at the back of the unit, connecting the Mark IV board to the DB25 line out, while the other side of the mute board goes where our bridge board was previously connecting the Mark IV board to the 3D board. We'll again look closely and gently press at first to see that the pins are lining up loosely over all the slots in both sections. When we're confident of that, we can begin adding more pressure little by little onto both sections. It's very important that the muterang board be fully seated where all of the pins are no longer visible. So we are going to want to continue to apply pressure until this board is all the way down and what can help is to take something somewhat broad, flat, and blunt and use it to gently but firmly press the board down from above. Absolutely double check the alignment of the pins underneath the mute board by looking from the side and ensure that no pins are exposed or offset. Again, make sure this is seated all the way down all around. Peel the new foam cap to reveal a sticky side and place it down on the muterang board where it used to go over the bridge board. This just holds it until you can replace the top cover and keeps the board from walking off. Now we can take our AES MIDI board with the gasket that we removed earlier and attach it so that this set of pins lines up and the DB25 connector is facing out. This set of pins is quite small and it's a bit tight so again be absolutely sure this gets mated properly. It will remain a bit wobbly until we attach the back panel, so let's do that next. We'll slide the back panel on and replace the bottom three screws. For now, let's just screw in the two DB25 screws on the AES connector. At this stage, before we finish reassembling the unit, let's test it out. We'll attach power, and on the front panel, we're looking for LED rings to spin up and for a jump in the input meters. You should also note a click from the relays on the muterang, and this would indicate that the Mark IV upgrade has been successful. If you get no lights on the front panel when you power on or any other unexpected behavior, please contact us at our support email address with the subject Mark IV upgrade. So we've turned the box back off and removed power. Next, we can proceed in reassembling by replacing the remaining DB25 screws. Then we have the two longer threaded Phillips head screws that go back on either side of the four pin XLR power connector. Then we have our four ring nuts on the back. When reattaching the ring nuts around the SMPTE I.O., it can be helpful to press down on the AES connector board where the barcode label is to make sure it remains seated properly. Just check to make sure you don't have any small bits of loose debris anywhere inside the unit. You can use canned air here or just blow it out. We can now add back the top panel and recall that the masking strip should be facing the front of the unit. We'll replace all of our screws on top and on the sides. If you have rack ears, they will use the longer screws to attach them. 
and you can leave out the shorter screws on the front sides where the rack ears attach. If you have an edge card, you can install it again at this stage. The last thing to do to make it official is to pull off the old dome tag. You can carefully use an X-Acto knife to get it started. Then take your new one, peel off the backing, line it up carefully and press down. This concludes the installation. If you have any questions about any steps in this process or run into any problems, please reach out by emailing support at mhsecure.com.